Hi, I am Johan. I'm the founder of the It's in the Node and the creator of the Vision Sprint. And in this video, I will show you shortly what the Vision Sprint is all about, but essentially how we have moved from using it as a physical workshop and move it in, into the virtual environment. So we're using tools like Zoom and Mirror.com to run the Vision Sprint uh, virtually. And I'm just gonna share my screen here and get going. Let's see here. So, uh, short presentation, it's not 193 slides as it may look here. Uh, but just to start with, what is the Vision Sprint? We call it a way of pressure testing your company's vision. So you may already have a vision document and done lots of uh, work around the vision, but uh, you may not be satisfied with how uh, it actually turns out in the organization. So maybe you know that it's working or not, uh, but you don't know why. And the Vision Sprint is a way to, through a workshop, let multiple teams in your organization uh, go through the vision and uh, become a part of it as well. Uh, so it's still a really led by direction kind of thing, but you invite everyone in the organization to really become a part of it. And we do it because we've been working with OKRs or objectives and key results for the last seven years. And we've seen uh, when implementing OKRs that the, the vision and the why and the what and the how of teams and companies is often one thing that's, that's missing. But also in other circumstances, if you're, for example, introducing SAFE or similar methods, uh, a good point of departure is to gather everyone in the team and align them around a common set of uh, values, your why and your what and how. So it can really be used for different uh, things. Uh, the vision sprint is uh, divided into four chapters. So the first thing we do is that we uh, develop a set of principles for work and they are derived from values and motivations that the team has uh, responded to in a survey and uh, developed. So that's the first thing. And then the three other parts of this, the why, the what, and the how. We're talking about uh, what that is really uh, short. It's not the, the company mission. It's more of a, an objective, and an OKR for the whole company or team uh, that is to be done within the coming two years. And then the last part, the how, is a uh, set of focus areas and OKRs on how to uh, reach that what, basically. Yeah, I forgot about the why, but it's pretty obvious uh, the purpose of your team and uh, really the strong center of the whole vision. And so, so why do we do this? We think that uh, it's in the node stands for, one of the things we stand for is that each individual needs to be in tune with the company in order for the company to be successful and be uh, flexible and adaptive in today's environment, especially now. Um, and we think that making the vision work in a linear perspective of creating the vision and trying to get it out through different layers of leadership is not uh, the best way to do it. We think that uh, there's a more organic way to do it. Leadership should state the vision and direction. We think that is really important. But leadership also needs to get feedback from the rest of the organization on how that is, how they are uh, interpreting uh, the vision and how they are setting initiatives and OKRs towards this vision. So uh, the outcome of each vision sprint is that you in fact set a set of individual OKRs and you connect them to the focus areas. So in this view, you pretty much have blue uh, areas, which are focus areas, and you have the green ones, the cost funds that are OKRs. And some OKRs may be uh, unaligned to focus areas, and those are represented here. So this is an ongoing thing rather than a linear thing. We think it's quarterly uh, adopted and, and, and edited. We think you should have a chief focus area officer in your company that is constantly focused on, on this. And if you don't have one yet, we can help you get started with it. Um, 
But yeah. this is a really what it boils down to, uh, making a more agile, more adaptive type of approach on, on vision. Um, but what is the vision sprint in terms of scheduling? Uh, when we do it normally, we have first a survey and then a second survey where we reflect on the answers from the first survey. And then we run a workshop for six to eight hours uh, during the day. And we end up with uh, a dinner, maybe. Um, nowadays, that's kind of impossible. So we've been forced to uh, adapt ourselves into all these new tools. And uh, we thought we were pretty digital before, but uh, we learned a lot the last two months. So what we're doing instead now is virtual. And just to hang on there a bit on what this is the difference between virtual and remote. Uh, I think what we're looking at right now, what you are looking at right now, is kind of a re remote setting. I am talking, I'm showing you stuff on your computer. You can kick back uh, in your chair and just listen, maybe take notes if you think it's interesting. That's uh, good enough for the remote part. But if you're gonna create with your team, if your team, all of the people in your team are gonna come together and, and create something, uh, remote is not good enough. It won't work to just have a uh, Google slide set up a screen share and discuss, especially not if you're more than five people. Um, so you need to go virtual and virtual has completely different uh, demands on, on each person. Each person needs to be on the same level with everyone else on a minimum uh, requirement level of, of tools. So. You need to know uh, the video conferencing tool you, you're working with. You absolutely need to know the basic functions in, in Miro or uh, Mural or whatever tool you're using for the virtual part. You need a virtual software um, and you need training to do this before you have the actual workshop. So a lot of preparations is needed. Uh, you make, make sure that everyone knows how to copy paste, uh, move, change colors stuff like this, there's a whole bunch of stuff that is, is added when you, when you do it virtually. Um, so when we do the vision sprint in virtual mode, uh, if I go back to, to this view, uh, we start still with the survey, we start there, but then we have a primer. And so instead of a second survey, we use a primer to further reflect on, on the questions and answers from the first survey. Um, and then we've divided the four chapters into four episodes so you can pretty much do them uh, not on the same day we recommend that you don't do it on the same day you can't sit in front of a computer more than one and a half maximum two hours in, in one stretch so uh, we do it in different days so we have the first chapter there the second chapter why so the values here is the principles and values and motivators uh, what how and then we set the OKRs so there's four uh, different time zones and then we we'll celebrate uh, hopefully also but more in the virtual uh, party maybe uh, so so that is uh, the end of the remote uh, version here uh, i will now show you how Miro is working as, as you see stuff is already happening here uh, we're not looking at a presentation anymore uh, i'm showing you the board if you would have been invited now to the vision sprint you would also be in this board simultaneously as I am, looking at the same stuff as I am. Uh, we can edit stuff and, and create stuff together. Uh, I see where you are, if we're a team of 10 to 20 people, we all see where everyone else is and what they're currently doing. So it's really uh, cool to, to see that simultaneous action going on. Um, so, so to start with here, I just have some structure. I won't go into that so much, but basically how we're working IRL and virtual. Um, if I zoom, in, zoom out a bit more, uh, we'll go to the individual workspaces here. So the vision sprint is basically consisting of different parts. Uh, one part is slides where I present or the facilitator presents different concepts and so on and prepping people uh, before the next exercise uh, about different themes. But, uh, and then there's the, the, the collective, the team exercises. And then there's the individual workspaces. Uh, and this is an example of the uh, individual workspaces. So let's say there are 10 people here. Everyone has their own workspace for each exercise. So there's a bunch of 
exercises that we've developed now in the virtual version where we normally had exercises on a whiteboard in, in a room we we needed to to rethink the way that's been done a lot and uh, created uh, new exercises that will fit the virtual uh, perspective so people basically work here individually and then they go to the team exercises so when they come into the meeting they pretty much uh, start here I, I do go through uh, definitions and, and uh, do an icebreaker challenge uh, exercise to begin start to kick, kick things off with uh, go through slides and here's an example of the first uh, exercise that. so the first chapter's exercise is basically just one page but we do multiple exercises in um, so we we've, we've been uh, asking about what motivates the team so we're taking the moving motivators cards for this which is really cool and a big shout out also to uh, uh, Andy Dow who created these illustrations and we're kind enough to say that any startup could use it uh, really thrilled about using his illustrations to uh, uh, do these uh, moving motivators cards. But this is not moving motivators, it's just that we, we ask the different motivators of the team. and We collect a summary of it and uh, put them on, on this pyramid to, to explain what the, or visualize what the team is actually motivated by. Uh, after that we ask about values that's connected to this. Uh, we ask each team member to create a principle. So in this case, it would be multiple principles. Uh, what, what should we think about when we're working? How should we work then? And why should we work in that way in order to make sure that we are staying motivated, especially for those motivations that are especially important for us. So that's basically the essence of what we're doing in, in this first chapter. And the last thing is that we also create objectives of how we ourselves can change. So if we want to create change as a team or a company, we also must learn that we need to change ourselves in order to make that happen. So what this can look like kind of in an end state is something like this. We voted on different principles, we added objectives and so on and so on. So um, it's really cool. I think uh, it was a long time ago I was uh, getting so excited about it. software as I've been with Miro. I know there's other great tools out there like Mural and so um, But really cool what you can actually create with it as a team together with people from completely different place, places in, on earth. Kind of hard if you're going to do it uh, too wide uh, time zone wise but uh, as long as you more or less into the same time zones uh, it's something I really recommend, especially in these times uh, to do. So uh, I won't go through all the exercises we do. Uh, instead, reach out to me and I'm happy to connect and uh, hear about your current challenges and see how we might be able to help and uh, help you get started with the Vision Sprint and doing it virtually and reach out and create some creative beauty with your team. So thank you a lot for listening. Or not.